So let's suppose we have a spring that has a spring constant of 400 newtons per meter. So let's suppose our spring is in the following initial position at x naught. And in this position, our spring is not compressed and it's not stretched. So, in part A, we want to calculate the work required to compress our spring a distance of 15 centimeters. So, recall that the force in a spring is not constant. And the formula for the work as a result of the spring force is given by the following equation. So the work is equal to one-half times k, our spring constant, times the square of our displacement or change in position. So in this case, our change in x is simply 15 centimeters, but because we're dealing with meters, we have to convert this to meters. So equivalently, we can say our change in x is 0.15 meters. So we simply divide it by 100. So we plug in our numbers, we have one half of 400 newtons per meter multiplied by the square of 0.15 meters and we get 4.5 joules of energy is required to compress our spring with this spring constant a distance of 15 centimeters or 0.15 meters. Now, let's go to part B. So if a mass of 3 kilograms is placed at the end of the compressed spring, calculate the velocity at the moment the spring returns to its initial position. So we're neglecting friction. So we're dealing with a frictionless place, so that means all the energy that was stored in the spring because we compressed the spring will now go into increasing or accelerating our block of 3 kilograms. So in other words, in part A, what we essentially did, so we compressed the spring and we transferred energy into our spring. So when we transferred energy into the spring, now there's energy stored in that spring. So if we place the block, uh, the block on a frictionless plane and that spring is released, what happens is all the energy that was stored into the spring will transfer into the block. So all the energy that was stored in the spring will transfer to the block. So at our position of x naught, all the energy, all 4.5 joules of energy will be transferred into the block, accelerating the block to some velocity. So to find the velocity, recall the formula for kinetic energy, one half times mass times velocity squared. So all the energy that we found in part one, 4.5 joules, is equal to one-half times mass v squared. So we bring the one-half in mass to this side and we take the square root of both sides. So we get that our velocity is equal to the square root of 2 times 4.5. So square root of 9 divided by 3. So square root of 3 is equal to approximately 1.7 3 meters per second. So, in step A, we essentially transferred energy into the spring in part B. The energy in the spring was transferred into the block, and in part C, we essentially want to redo part B. But now suppose some of the energy is lost to friction. 1.5 joules of energy is lost to friction. So we want to calculate our new velocity. So what basically happens in part C is all the energy that was stored in our spring is now transferred not only into the block, but also dissipates into heat, into friction. And so we lose 1.5 joules of energy from our initial 4.5 joules because that's how much was stored in our spring to begin with. So 4.5 minus 1.5 joules gives us 3 joules, and so once again we take this equated to 1 half mv squared, 
we solve for velocity and we see that velocity when we have friction is 1.41 meters per second so it's slightly less than part b and that makes sense because we lost some of that energy to friction so we have less energy to accelerate our object to a higher velocity